Alrighty. I'm going to try this. Alrighty. I'm going to try this. Okie doke. Let's see what happens. I'm upside down. Well, that's nice. Hi, everybody. Like I said, we're... Oh, wait. I've got it forth facing me. Okay. That's enough of that silly stuff. This is Vicki. I'm going to turn this down. Don't laugh at me or I will haunt you. Okay. I'm going to show you a little experiment I did the other day. This is based on a, if anybody shows up, because this is my very first one, let me know if you can hear me. Anyway, <clears throat> if not, you can catch it on the replay. Still getting a little bit set up. Let me put this up. Just a little bit. Okay. Now. Now. This is what I did the other day. And it's watercolor except for some India ink I used here and I tried every white marker I had in the house to do this. Um, this is modeled after a lady in England from the late 1800s. And what she would do, she was a medium or a seance person. And she would go under a spell and she would paint depending on what the uh, departed people, <laughs> the dead people, said to her. So her her things were all full of mark making and just crisscrossed color. And no one's been able to duplicate her effort. But it's said that she was the predecessor to Kadinsky and some of those other modern art painters of the 1940s and 50s. So I'm going to show you what I did. This one I used... A background that I had <clears throat> done like this just putting two colors down most of the time I labeled what colors I used but I didn't on that one I did on this one you know just color exploration this one I used uh, skip green that's a cheap Joe's and brown matter and I have no clue what brand that was I also used some plastic wrap crumpled up and let it dry so I had some interesting patterns and I then just started making marks in watercolor. I did use for my main watercolor I used the um, oh crap Decadent Pies by Prima. I'll get it out. Those probably weren't the best to use, so this time around I'm going to use Core. And that's by Golden. So let's get to it. Move this one. First thing I'm going to do is get my core out. Get my core out. I'm going to get my core out. I don't know if y'all remember or not, this is my organization system I did for my watercolor tubes and I finished this just right before I had that emergency horrible surgery and haven't really put it to the test yet but it works pretty good because I've got all of my brands in pans color chart and they're all labeled so if I want a particular color I just pick out what I want pull the pan I can put it into another pan that I'm using for a project like so and that was not the one I meant to show you this one's the one I meant to show you those are some new tubes I got a month or so ago and I just wanted to isolate them until I could play with them a little bit and then they will go into their respective tin okay okay 
Let me put this somewhere safe. Okay, we're still going. See these cute little clipboards? That was my last foray into doing things for sale. Um, anyway, I've got a bunch of these now I can use. Let's start with this one. It looks like I may have did a spray through a stencil. That's what it looks like. That's what we're going to call it. Let's see. This one needs to go up. Now, here are my core colors. I got the 24 piece set. I have not labeled these yet. I mean, the, the tins are labeled. I mean, the pans. I don't know if I'm going to keep these separate. Or mix them into my others. No, not yet. All right, here we go. I'm going to spray these puppies down. Now, the reason I'm trying these this time is because when I used them when I first got them, they were um, very vibrant, and I like the way they moved. So we're going to let that cogitate for a minute. I've got my cotton sock cuff. I remember to wipe it without you know wiping on my own watch these are the brushes I'm going to be using this is the one I used the other day this is a cheap Joe's Scroggy's loose goose looks like size one can you see that I'm filming with my iPhone whoop come back come back to me come on there can you see that okay what this this is a uh, brush that's used by sign painters and it holds a lot of water in the belly and then it tapers to a real fine point and if you hold this at the very end of the brush you can just lift and make a real fine line so there's that one and the next one we're going to use whoops not that one this one this one is a Cheap Joe's Lizard Lick, Lizard's Lick, size 2. Let's see if we can do that game again. Hey, Aunt Beck. I'm trying this live stuff. See if I can do, get inspired again. Okay, where is it? Come on. It's not going to focus. Okay, what this one this one has, and these are both these are all natural fiber. This one has hairs on the outside that are shorter than the delivery hairs on the inside. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a delay. I'm looking at my iPad. There's a delay. So that's why I'm being slowed down. This one works in much the same way as the uh, dagger style brush. Here's what it looks like wet. And this one as well, you can make real fine marks and the body will hold enough paint for you to make sometimes more than one mark. And the third brush we're going to use is the most expensive and we're going to see if it's worth its salt. This is my super duper Jean Haynes Kolinsky Sable. It's a size 2. And this is a liner brush.
That's what it looks like dry. And here's the Can you see it? Gene Haynes. Y'all forgive me on, on stuttering around. I don't mind talking during my regular videos, I guess, because um, I can always edit. But I can't edit on this. So it's making me nervous. And I'm then trying to look at the... <laughs> trying to look at the comments. Hey, Aunt Beck, you're taking me into the kitchen? Good. What are we making for dinner? I want some. Hey, Rona. Y'all are in on the inaugural, except for my test that I did a week ago. All right, I was going to show you what this one looks like. Comes to a very fine point. Now, all I did to this was wet it, and I shook it to get the excess water off. So we're going to use that one today. Brush in the floor. Y'all are my guinea pigs. Hey, Lisa. Chicken pot pie, we had one last week. Except we cheat and use Marie calendars. And we get the turkey. Okay, here we go. Y'all know the drill. If you need me for anything type it in all caps and maybe I'll see it and if we get enough of my followers on here we'll uh, get somebody to be a moderator for me okie dokie not to labor on health or anything but those of you who follow me know that I've been out for about six eight months with um, horrible horrible colostomy in the bag and then put me back together so two surgeries in six months was a little bit much for my body to handle so I've been real slow coming back not because I physically all that's fine I don't you know nothing's wrong mentally I had been worth a shit sorry excuse me I need a different little brush Here's just a craft brush. You can tell this brush has been loved. <laughs> I like these though. These are low Cornell soft comfort. I got them at Joann's. But if you ever see them, get them because they're really good brushes. And if I was a good mama, I'd glue that back down. We'll do that later. I'm going to start with some Cad Yellow Medium. I don't want just a whole lot of water, but I want enough pigment in here that I can drag that long brush through it and get the whole thing wet. Now, we may get bored, and if we do, we'll have to continue this. All right, here comes my sword, my sword brush. Okay. Now I've got the whole brush really covered in paint. Now I'm going to hold it at the end. Oops, I dripped. Dab off the extra so it doesn't drip and there's another drip. Okay. And I can't walk and chew gum at the same time, so forgive me. Now, this is unscripted. It's kind of like doodling with watercolor. It is like doodling with watercolor. And we're going to just layer these marks over each other. And we're going to build from light colors to dark. See, now I've mixed up that paint and it's already gone. So go back to El Cheapo brush, 
which is in the water, which is why the wrapper cracked off of it. I see some more comments. Okay, Beck, I'll be over for dinner later. What time? No one said this would be easy. Okay, drag the whole brush through it. Holding the brush. Oh, you can't see. Damn it. How's that? It's really funky with the delay and I'm looking at the iPad and it's confusing because it's behind what I say. Don't try this while drinking. I will get arranged. I will get this figured out. The good news is that it's live and the bad news is that you're not going to edit it. So that means that the good news is I don't have to worry about a couple hours of editing and the bad news is I don't do any editing so y'all are stuck okay I need more paint this is where a liquid watercolor would be great let me show you what else I've got these are natural organic bird's eye diapers I've got a pack of six or eight on Amazon because I got tired of going through paper towels and even though I use shop towels from Sam's that are real heavy or heavier than a paper towel um, you know we're still adding to the landfill so these can be washed I don't know about using them with oils we'll find out I don't know that I want oil paint in my washing machine here try to get this where you can see it come on okay Those little dots don't matter because they're going to be and as the story goes let's see this woman's name was Georgiana Houghton H-O-U-G-H-T-O-N Houghton, Houghton I'm from Arkansas, I don't know that fancy stuff she was British and there are only about 40 or 50 of her known works I switch to the um, Jean Haynes. I'm just wanting to see what it does. It's easier to load up. Two, three, four. I got a good four strokes out of that one brush load. And that's where na natural hair brushes come in. That's their strong suit if that's what you want 
sometimes you don't want a whole lot of pig pigment in your brush pigment load and then a mixed synthetic or something like that comes in handy now just pretend I'm getting messages from beyond Since we're working in the studio, I'm put it here. I've been using these clipboards for when I work in front of the TV, which I've been doing way too much of lately. Lately, hell, a year? Not that long. Six months. Okay, that little brush works good. Let's put that up. Now let's try this one. This is the Lizard Slick. Get it good and wet. You can tell I'm impulsive because I want the brush to load quick. Take your time. And the brush that wins is the missing one. Well, poo. Here it is. This is the winner. It works the best. A red tea. Let's see. I don't think that yellow is going to... Plain yellow is going to work. I normally don't waste color, but... In this sense, I'm going to cheap brush and I'm going to go into the lighter yellow and this looks to be cad lemon you'll know I can look it up look how cool that is this is core cad yellow PR I don't know what PR stands for I forgot it's PY35. Y'all are going to get so bored because this is all I'll do for another hour. I guess that's the beauty of live, isn't it? Can't fast forward this. Uh, Rona, Elona. Elona, I'm using Core by Golden. And the reason is because it's got such a heavy pigment load. The one that I did the other day, um, I used the Prima Decadence, and I loved the colors. But my actual watercolor lines underneath it didn't show up as good. So that's why I'm trying the core today, because it does have a heavy pigment. Gosh, I'm just so tickled. I've got so many people watching already. Make Wiki smile. And this is also a case where using tube paint. I've got all the tubes for these. I've been buying all tube paint when I buy any. Which with 200 plus tubes of watercolor paint, I don't really need any. I need an assistant who will mix my colors up for me. Okay. Now, this brush. Let me see who else is in. <laughs> Your pot pie is a winner, I bet. Splot. That's what this is for, and I haven't trained myself to use it yet. See how much pigment this brush holds? No, this is very um, zen. Remember, souls of the dead were telling 
Georgiana what to paint if she was in her seance state. She wasn't screwing around with live YouTube video either. Actually, I'm very pleased that this yellow is showing up like it is. But it is a cadmium, which means it's going to be a little more opaque. See, I already need paint. And I've got a fly in here with me. Randy's home today. So I've got my door closed and the fan on. So if y'all try this, squirt a little tube paint out. The thing I like about this little storage system is that all 200 plus tubes of paint are contained in one little six inch by six inch square box. It's a cigarette tipperillo thing. So if you go in a good cigar shop, they ought to have some, and they usually just give them away. But we have lost our cigar shops here in Arkansas for the most part because they keep messing with the regulations. So, Randy used to be a rep for, ooh, nice one. Can you believe I'm still getting paint off this load? And these brushes are inexpensive. So, of course, I got one in, I think, pretty much every size they had. Remember to hold it down toward the tip. And I'm also using my shoulder to move it around. The slower you go, or maybe say that different, the faster you go is when you get these broken lines. And they're cool too. Slow and steady. Um, the paper, I think, is arches. Because it came on a pad or a block. I've just about gotten all the goodie out of this little bowl. So I'm just going to dance around it. talking to me. Yeah, please, Aunt Beck. <laughs> I've got new glasses on and I have to raise them up and get close so that I can see them. Uh, yes, Alana, those brushes are used for sign painting. And that is an art form in and of itself. Okay, we're ready for the next color. If I had a hammer, I've got a whole bunch of a straw. Um, God, what do you call them? You push the end of them and suck up paint and stuff in them. I don't know. 
I don't know. It'll come to me. This is either Quinn Nicolazzo Yellow. And I think I'm just going to work my way up the color wheel. Because my whites on the last layers will show up better if the upper layers are dark. That's my story. That's my theory. We'll see how it works. Remember, I, I want this a little bit like cream because I want the heavy pigment load. Yeah, pipette. <laughs> My brain sometimes doesn't work at the same speed as, or my mouth doesn't work the same speed. This may be too much water. Okay, here we go again. Yeah, that's too much water. Or not enough pigment. I thought about this a lot. I researched everything I could find on this artist. And I got to thinking about it. She did all of hers with watercolor, supposedly. You can look her up. Georgi Georgiana Houghton. Um, and I got to thinking, what could she have accomplished if she had all the markers and stuff that we have access to? And she still created gorgeous works of art. All right, let's see where we are now. <laughs> Y'all not gonna believe my setup here. This is my encaustic tray. I'm trying to finish up an encaustic class I took. So until I finish it, I'm not putting it up. All right, here we go again. Come on now. This is real close to that first color we put on. That's okay. I love this brush. And yeah, you can do this with anything. You can do it with acrylic. I like the fluidity of watercolor and the transparency. This could be a very soothing, zen-like. I'm not getting any dead bodies channeling me. Come on, take your time. My ADD kicks in, and man, I'm off to the races. You're supposed to enjoy every movement. That's why the Japanese or the Asian form of painting is different than ours. They let their brush be the boss. Let it drag. Okay, going on to a different color. I'm just going, I haven't made my color chart on these yet, but when you stick your brush in it, 
and it comes up this is Quin Gold Quinacridone Gold this is uh, the Quins are a um, more modern paint pigment a lot of these pigments are designed for the car industry and other industrial uses and then artists get them down the road these are chemically manufactured instead of being mineral based like your siennas and umbers and all that are actually ground up rocks and stuff <laughs> what a science lesson Ooh. okay this is going to be just a little bit more splashy I don't have on my apron so I'm splashing it on me someone asked me the other day why I don't like coloring books they're not relaxing to me I'd rather doodle with just a black pen and a piece of paper than have to choose the colors I want to use every time. How are we doing over here? Yeah, relaxation CD playing. That's a good one. Um, YouTube be all over me for that. I normally, if I'm painting for myself, I have music on. And this can also be used to cover up paintings that you're not quite happy with don't waste that paper okay we're going to call that one done or that color done It be I think I am the babbling brook if you want to know it I'm just going to use whoop. I'm going to use the same where's my pip at we already did that orange now we're going to go into a red this looks like a very warm red I'm not familiar with their color names yet this one is transparent pyrrole orange which is a warm red see why I'm using a cheap brush to abuse Wrong red. Let's see if that'll do it. could use a little more pigment no don't put so much water in the well Vicki if 
if you mix it from a tube straight from a tube sometimes you spend just about as much time liquefying that So do y'all like live videos? Or do you prefer one that's edited and fast forwarded? Hey Rosemary Shannon, there's my girl. Shannon, this is um, an artist from England from the 1800s, and she uh, <laughs> she babbled with the dead people, one of those seance mediums that were so popular at that point, and she only used watercolor. Her name is Georgiana Houghton, and I found her the other day, and then you did your little video on using a white stencil and this is pretty much the same thing here's the piece I did the other day so I just layered as many different marks as I could in different colors and then came back in with some white and ended it with some white India ink and that's exactly what her work looks like well I mean exactly yeah yeah sort of like her work um, only 40 or so of her pieces have been found and if you live in England there's a, a gallery right now that's got a showing of her work and there are millions of products out today that we use that I'm sure she would have tried okay I'm mixing up too much water so my make do pipette put it in first and then put your finger on the end of it Vicky. all I'm doing is going up the color wheel um, I typically don't like to use every color in the rainbow but This is just play. If y'all are anywhere near Northwest Arkansas next Saturday, Shannon over at Canvas Corp is having an open house. Okay, and then dab it off. Aunt Beck's cooking chicken pot pie for everybody. But she hasn't told me yet what time dinner is. I'm going to have to get another mixer. I hate throwing away anything. Oh, that color was probably vermilion. It's a bluish red. This would be cad red medium. I was right. Okay, now we're going to this one, which I think is vermilion, maybe? Permanent scarlet.
I'm not going to do very much of that because it's so close to these other colors. Canvas Corp is in Fayetteville, Arkansas, by the way. The home of Tattered Angels and Seven Gypsies and Canvas Corp canvas products. Let me check this chat. Hey, Rosemary. Both. Y'all like both types of video. But it gives you a chance to ask questions. Shannon, oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, it's a ghetto pipette. <laughs> yeah, Shannon, you can do this. Here's the brush that I figured out was the best. They're inexpensive. And they're from Cheap Joe's. And they're called... Scroggy's Loose Goose. The name of it is enough for me, so. Cheap Joe's does not take art seriously. And we can do some circles. Now this is all in the brush now. ADD's kicking in, y'all. Make me slow down. Okay, that was about the right amount of water. With my ghetto pipette. Yeah, whatever works. South Carolina. Okay, that that's the warm reds, and now we're going to step over into the cool reds. Okay, what are you? That's... Core Alizarin Crimson. When this color was made from berries and the poop of a titsy fly, it was very fugitive, faded. But now these are chemical versions. I'm going to drag this brush through the paint. Very light hand. Try not to put any pressure on that brush. And it'd probably work better still if I was standing up. But I'm lazy. I wish y'all could see my ghetto setup here. I've got my iPhone on a stand right above me. And it's plugged into a power strip running down the side of my leg. And every time I move my hand, I get into it. But that's okay. It works. too much water. And this looks to be like a quinoa. This is magenta. Ain't no way around it, baby. That's magenta.
<laughs> yeah, this is thin stuff. Somebody, I think it's in Norway, there's a whole trend that they're doing videos of like mount a camera on the front of a train and then they turn them on as the trains going through the countryside and people are loving it because it's just movement and it's very soothing and one I saw a little sneak peek of I watched a cow walk through a meadow for a couple hours We're getting some good marks. If anybody's watching this from the recording, it was recorded live. It's sort of successful. Ooh, purple. See my watercolor sleeve? Y'all that came in late, if you can train yourself to use it, it's pretty handy. And dab that off. This is, I want to be careful with this. That's so purple, it's almost black. hope y'all are doing something besides watching me too this would be boring I used to play the piano and one of my my talent for local beauty pageant y'all were talking 1966 so it was Liberace sometimes when I'm making these marks I kind of feel like the old Liberace remember I'm supposed to be channeling dead people That's what she did. This appears to be ultramarine. I'm trying to be a little bit fast for you guys. See how intense these core colors are? Hey, BJ. <laughs> if I was... <laughs> Aunt Beck says if she was channeling dead people, it would be all grayscale with lots of screen faces. No, I like the... Uh, the little meadow, you know, everybody's happy and skipping. and Of course, this looks a little bit like not at the opera or something. Edward Munch. <laughs> I 
may end up with a great big old mess. But you can always gesso it and start over. Look at that color. I'm not going to look at my feed from Twitter. I had to. See, this is where in an edited video you just speed it up. But then you wouldn't have a chance to talk. Let's see, that was that one. What is this one? That's Prussian blue. So dang dark, you can't tell it apart from the purples. I'm going to go ahead and do a few more since I've got the paint. Just mark making. I don't think I'd ever make it as a sun painter. It's got to be a hot job. Okay, I think we just about got all that one. Scribble, scribble. This is some sort of a turquoise. And it needs some water. I'm sniffling. Sorry, guys. It's all in the brush. Need some more of that. I think if this is everybody in the world's favorite color. I'm not going to put the browns. I don't like browns too much. Or if I do, particularly in oil painting, I'll mix them. Take a little ultramarine and a little alizarin, make purple, and then add 
enough cad red to bring it into a burnt sienna color you can control the intensity of the colors that way am i missing anything hey gina b some rock stars in here today gosh from my very first video how'd y'all find out for you latecomers this is the experiment I did this last week the artist is Georgiana Houghton Houghton when I was I mean I did this but she's the artist from the 1870s that did this technique while she was holding a seance and, ch and channeling dead people. So the spirit talked to her while she was painting. And I ain't got no spirit talking to me, but I got you guys. And this is where we're starting to get a little bit muddy. But it won't matter because the white Might come in and paint some of these areas just to y'all know how much I hate mud. Let's do some green, slip over into the greens. And that was the base color that we started with. This is an olive green, which is not going to show up at all. Nope. You can come back in and paint some of the squares. Not with this brush because it just goes everywhere. I think I'm not going to use that color. Alright. I'm going to dry this mess. Hang on. Take my handy dandy bird's eye diaper and blot up some of the wetter spots. Filming live is going to be good for me because I've got the attention span of a third grader. And I had a Kleenex, but I don't know what I did with it. It's probably in the floor. Okay. Now, we're still damp.
Now just for grins, I'm going to see what this, what their white does. I'm just taking this straight out of the, straight out of the well. Whites are typically um, opaque, but it depends on how much water you add to them. In fact, that goes for every paint. If it's an opaque paint, you can water it way down and I'm just playing. At this about this time you're supposed to be thinking of a little bit of a landscape. See so yeah that that mud's up real quick. Nothing wrong with a little mud. I hope y'all go look her up. Her stuff was fascinating. I'd show it to you if I was smart enough to go find my picture. Oh, hey, you know what? I probably can. I can use my iPad. Hang on, I'll be right back. Maybe. Maybe, baby. See? Can y'all see that? That was the base for the one I did the other day. See? Same, same, but different. And I bet you hers is bigger. That's my excuse. Isn't that neat? like the old you know in the days of days of old um, the automatic writing where people would all right it came right back on play anyway that white's going on nice to suit me and I did the other one vertical so I think I'm going to do this from vertical too. It doesn't really matter. No, because then y'all can't see it. Alright, we'll do it horizontal. And I'll just kind of do something from corner to corner. You know, the bad thing about this is I talk to myself while I'm here by myself. See if I miss anything. Again, this is Core from Golden. And I hesitated a long time before I bought it. Because I already have over 200 watercolor tubes. I think Gina Aaron's must have more than me. But not that we're competing. But you know how that goes. The secret to what I'm doing right now is laying down the first stroke of pure white and then brushing down to make a gradient. There's your first stroke. Now I'm just going to follow it on down. And any color that it picks up is fine. I'm only going over it once. So if that was good and dry, which it's not, And also, I'm making this up as I go along. But I do have to tell you that the core paints work a whole lot better than the Primas. Any dye-based paint is not going to work that well for this. I don't think she says. It might.
kind of a ghosty look right there. If you like that, hold my beer and watch this shit. Oh, sorry. I'm going to have to do something different with my... I am using my cheapo brush. I, I buy these in multiples. I use them in oil painting because they're soft, but because they're soft, they wear out easy. See if I miss anything. What a brush. Beach, are you talking about the uh, Scroggy's Loose Goose? Yeah, that's a cool brush. I didn't know what I was going to do with it when I first got it, but I figured it out. So what are y'all working on while I work? Well, I know what Aunt Beck's doing. She's making us a chicken pot pie. Very light feather touch. Dots. So now the deal is I'm just going to keep layering white and this will be my under layer of the white. You can do I keep wanting to say Tai Chi, that's not it. Ichi symbols. And only you will know that they're there. So there's three of them. How long have we been on, guys?
If I finish this this afternoon, guys, I'll have it on my Instagram feed. The finished piece. A little bit of dry brushing now. I don't have as much water. This white is really doing a good job. I had trouble finding a marker the other day that would work. Keeping all my white right here in the in the path. Have I put anybody to sleep yet? Who's still here? We've got four still. You guys are brave. I appreciate each and every one of you for joining my first live video. I always enjoy watching you guys's. Especially if I've got a project I'm working on. I'm just about through with this one, this color, or this layer, I should say. I'll get it out in a minute. Any parts that look kind of muddy, you can just do that over. Just for grins, I have some Sumi ink, and it is vermilion. Let's see if we can get this to play with us today. I had trouble with it. I have a calligraphy pen here, and if my nib isn't worn out. And it may be. Alright, we're not going to do that. Let's go to this little guy. This is the Cheap Joe's Lizard's Lick. Doesn't hold near as much paint. Just want a little bit of something. I'm going to dry it.
enough of that. Now this is Bombay Dr. P.H. Martin's White India Ink. And this thing comes out in a big blob if you squeeze it. And the big blobs dry with wrinkles on them. I found that out the hard way. I think my ghostesses are a little confused today. Where's that fly? That doesn't like to go that direction. This is where a stencil would come in handy because I'm sure Miss Georgiana would have used one if she'd have had one. So let me get one. This one is from Patty Tolly Parish, and they come from eh, I stencil. Is that right? And this is hieroglyphic symbols, and I'm gonna assume that's the front page. And what am I gonna do? Here's a sponge. I'm gonna get just a little bit of white. Well, that was a very little bit. Well, that didn't do anything at all. Not much. I gotta get something better to put that on there with. This is a bistro chalk marker in white. I found out the other day that that one worked pretty good. This isn't really the kind of stenciling I wanted. I'll be right back. This, I'm sure, is a uh, stencil girl. That's a little bit more what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Chalkboard, this is Tattered Angels. I'm gonna see if it works. I bet this, but don't 
stick the jack up your ass. Oh, that's okay. These are water based, so I'm going to say that they count. It's making some nice marks. And then always turn it over to get the goodie on the other side. Yeah, we've got some good marks, and that's all we're after. You can either make them on your own or there's the lid to that. This isn't really a technique, this is just colored doodling. Now I've got an oil based Sharpie. And for some reason this one floods on me, so Like I said, for some reason this one floods on me. See? Well, this will wear me out. What I'm after are different variations of white. So that every time you look at this piece, you'll see something different. See? Dang it. Hate that. Now you see it, now you don't. Okay, you're going back in the drawer. I couldn't get these to work either. This is the jelly roll. So if y'all have a good pen that works like this, let me know. back on the bistro. I had every white pen marking thing I had last night or Friday when I did that. For me personally, I think I would like this better if I had restricted my palette. But you never know until you try. I'm not much of a warm color person. I like cool tones better. So anytime I get into the reds and yellows, it tends to bother me just a little. And we don't want Wiki bothered.
like to tell people just just do something I have to tell that to myself too don't you know because I hadn't been doing anything trying to get back in the groove almost everything that's done today has been done before and that goes for stenciling and goes for stamping it goes for fabric dyeing and almost always has roots back to ancient Eastern countries, China and Japan. And so it's always fun to research and see what someone's done before. And when I'm oil painting, I will often research the, the masters that I love so well, like William Bouguereau and And try to John Singer Sargent and try to analyze their methods. And now that I've done this, I'm going to do some more live feeds, maybe one or two a week. That, that's probably bad enough. And what did I use? Ow. Stabbed myself. I'm back on the ink. I want some real vibrant white. Making marks. Okay, maybe some bigger dots, and then I'm just about done. My tard. But I'm just glad all my parts are working the way they're supposed to, and I'll get out of this mental funk one of these days. It's not that I'm unhappy, I just don't have any energy. And people tell me that's what anesthesia does to you. And since I had it twice in six months, and two big hospital stays, everything's good now. No dietary restrictions or nothing. Okay. I'm going to call this done, guys. Because I'm tired. I'm bored. I told you it doesn't take me much. Aunt Beck, enjoy your pot pie. And BJ and Gina, if you're still here, I appreciate all y'all stopping in. Well, that's looking a little bit better through the screen. I'm looking at the iPad now. It's kind of a hot mess on this end. It's kind of neat right here. The paint's bleeding through the ink. That's cool.
Okay. I'm going to leave it for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. And we'll do something fun. Whoops. That's my head. <laughs> I'm such a goose. Anyway. We'll see you later. Bye.